As you, As have, you heard have heard from the songwriter about the need for rocks, never be sad or despondent if we have faith to believe. He's telling us that grace for the duties before us, if only we are to receive. I'm not believing that there is a lot of exploits for you to do in the year coming, 2023. If you accomplish them all, the Lord will grant unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. There are times in life that you have some, there are times in life that you have some challenges. And there are times that situations around you may be dear. But the Lord is saying, in the midst of it all, if only you hold on to the Lord, He will hold you on, He will keep you through, He will see you out in Jesus' name. Let's have the word of prayer together, Father. We thank you for bringing us through to the end of the year 2022. We appreciate you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your mind. Thank you for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for divine enablement. Thank you, Father, for seeing us through the thin and the thick of the year. The storms of life came, and we came through. Many began the year with us, but today we look around. There are nowhere to be found. Some of us, we took ill, we felt sick. You healed us. We have the need. You met those needs. Now, O oh Lord, we want to say, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. We know you have kept and preserved us for a purpose. And Lord, as we celebrate this last day of the year and looking towards a better future, a glorious future, Father, we pray you hold our hands, you guide our steps, and you direct our paths in Jesus' name. Speak to us now, words of life. Speak to us now, words of faith. Speak to us now. The words that will keep us all through the rest of the coming year, as a matter of fact, all through the rest of our life. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Again, I'll be talking on advancing despite adversity. Advancing despite adversity. It's Exodus chapter 14. I look at verse 15 there. Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore, Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. I prophesy into your life that in the year 2023, you are moving forward in Jesus' name. You are climbing the ladder of climbing the the ladder of prosperity and greater accomplishment in Jesus' name. Now, pay attention here. If you are not very, very careful, you just read this passage and then you move on. Here we see Israel had been in captivity for 430 years before now. And so, when you look at your situation, your condition, your problem, you completely forget about the solution that God has procured for you, and that solution is procured in Christ Jesus and through Christ Jesus. Yes, 430 years is a long period of time. Many have died, many have perished, and you are now alive. And the Lord, remember, gave a promise unto Abraham 430 years back. Pay attention. Every time you're going through a problem, look at the promise. The problem, and then the promise. The promise was there. The problem of life will never negate the promises of God. Help us with not a jot or teacher will pass without the fulfillment of the word of God. Soon and time seem to have derailed or eroded the plan of God for Israel. But understand that God is not a man. That he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Every promise of God for your life will come to pass. I said it will come to pass. At the appointed time, God showed up for Israel. At your own appointed time, God will show up 
for you and fulfill all his promises for your life in Jesus' name. What is adversity? Adversities are opposing situations. Adversities are opposing forces. They are situations that are contrary, that are negative, situations that are hostile, situations that are confrontational, situations that are argumentative in your life. And there are situations that seems to appear to want to impair, to damage, to harm, to spoil, to ruin your chances of success in life. And then when you concentrate too much on all those adversarial situations, you give up. You throw in the towel and you think there is no hope for you again. I prophesy into your life, your hope will come alive in Jesus' name. There is hope for you. Turn to your neighbor and say, there is hope for you. Turn to another person and say, there is hope for you. And your hope is coming alive in Jesus' name. Understand? Anytime you are going through challenges and situations, you are not the only one going through that situation. Others are going through it before. Others are going through it now. And after you, others will still go through it. And then remember also that some of those people that went through the same situation, they came out successful. Then say to yourself, by the power of the Lord, I will come out successful. Can you lift up a right hand and say in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Lord, I am coming out successful. I will not die in this situation. I will not perish with this situation. I am coming out. And you will come out in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Understand that every man, according to the Bible, Job chapter 14, verse 1, everyone that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Yes, the trouble is there. Pay attention. The trouble is there on one hand. The triumphing is there on the other side. If you stay on the side of trouble, you'll be enmeshed by the trouble. You'll be drowned by the trouble. But look around. Look at the side of triumph. Look at the side of victory. And then you'll see yourself triumphing in Jesus' name. I'm going to talk on three points. Number one, discouraging nature of adversity. The discouraging nature of adversity. When adversity comes, it comes in a negative way. It comes in a demoralizing way. It comes in a discouraging way. It comes like a despair, discouraging nature of adversity. And then point number two, decisive attitude towards adversity. Decisive attitude or measure towards adversity. And then finally, Desirable outcome. Adversity. Somebody is coming out. I said somebody is coming out. Somebody is triumphing. Somebody is moving forward. Somebody is succeeding in Jesus' name. Let's quickly come to the first point. Who can remind me the very first point? Discouraging nature of adversity. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10. The Bible tells us that if thou faith in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So, the essence of adversity, the goal of adversity, the nature of adversity is to make you to pay. It will get you weary. It will get you discouraged. It will get you down pumped in your spirit. It will get you to throw in the towel. It will get you to, throw, to give up. But you will not give up. That's why we sang the song. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up to your sorrows. Jesus will be them to part from sin the Lord. From sin the Lord. Sing, sing when your trials are greatest. Draw in the Lord and take that. You put your faith in the Lord. You put your trust in the Lord. You anchor your life in Christ Jesus, knowing fully well. 
that you never paid and they will never pay you in Jesus' name. Come to think of it, everyone that you can ever think of that is successful in life, anyone, everyone, anywhere in the world, in the secular world, in the spiritual world, in any situation that you ever can say, this person is a success story, materially success story, financially success story, academically success story, uh, matrimonially uh, success story, everywhere in the life, they all the adversity. They all went through it one way or the other. They passed through it and came out successful. And I can tell you, no matter what your past been, 2023 is a new day. It's a new dawn. You are coming out in Jesus' name. So all these successful people, there is something that is common about them. Number one, they have all these denominators. They had courage. The courage to stand still. The courage to continue. The courage to never give up. The courage to never lose hope. Number two, they were determined. They had the determination. That yes, the courage is there, but I am also determined. Number three, they had faith. They had faith. Number four, they had focus. They will not allow anything to distract them from the will of God, the plan of God, the, the call and the purpose of God for their life. Adversity shows up in a way. To protect, uh, to portray negative intention, yes. Why negative intention? is for a purpose. To separate the wheat from the tears. To separate the dreamer from those that really have dreams. To distinguish between victors and those that are vanquished. To disconnect the fearful from those that are the faithful. And to separate the heroes from those that are zero. I don't care if right now your life seems like you are zero. You are nobody. You are nowhere to be found. But a part of the Lord, the end of 2023, you will be not among the heroes in Jesus' name. I need a resounding name to that. Praise the Lord. Look at it also when adversity comes. Adversity showcases God's power in the midst of the storm. If there is no fire, there is no miracle. The fire you are going through now is to prove the miracle working power of God in your life. Look at the three Hebrews. If they had not been into the fiery furnace fire, we never would have known that God is able to deliver. Look at Daniel. He had, if he had not been thrown into the den of lion, we never would have known that God can stop the mouth of the lion from hurting an ordinary human being and uh, if God had not allowed the children of Israel to pass through the Red Sea, we, bet, we never would have known the power of God to pass the sea into two and to save his own people. And I'm telling you, no matter what you are going through, salvation is on the way for you in Jesus' name. In the book of Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8, the Bible says, I am the Lord. That is my name and my glory. Will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven image, if you are a child of God, if you are a follower of God, if you are a believer in God, I am telling you that by the power of the Lord, the glory of God will come up your life in Jesus' name. Come to think of it, we're celebrating Israel. The whole world is talking about Israel, Israel. People from all over the world, they're even visiting Israel. Israel did not come out of Egypt without adversity. For 430 years, they went through it. Uh, look at Joseph. We can talk about Joseph. Joseph did not come out uh, successful and become a prime minister in Egypt without adversity. In the parents' house, he was rejected and dejected. Uh, he was thrown into the pit. He ended up in Potiphar's house and from Potiphar's house to the prison. But then at the end of it, from the prison, from incarceration, from bondage, from limitation, from obstacle, he ended up in the palace. The Lord is going to promote somebody here. Amen. I said the Lord is going to promote somebody here in the name of Jesus. Look at Daniel also. Look at Daniel. Daniel was in Israel, and then there was war, and then people were taken captive, and they were taken to Babylon, and Daniel happened to be one of them, and Daniel did not say, well, I came here as a captive. 
I came here as a slave. Maybe you have been a captive of the devil. You can liberate yourself. You can release yourself. You can deliver yourself no matter the kind of captivity of sin, the captivity of self, the captivity of Satan, or the societal captivity. You are coming out and God will bring you out in Jesus' name. Daniel did not submit or subject himself to what brought him to Babylon. Daniel made up his mind. I'm coming out strong. He came out strong. He became a prime minister in a strange land. In this land, you will succeed. In this land, you will prosper. In this land, you will make it in Jesus' name. Today, we talk about Paul the Apostle and the chiefest among the apostles. But Paul also had his own adversity. As a matter of fact, he referred to it as thorn in the flesh, thorn in the flesh. And it was so severe, it was so serious, it was so discouraging, it was so damaging that Paul had to pray and say, Oh God, if only you can take this adversity, this turn in the flesh away from me. He went the first time. Remember, Paul prayed, miracle happened. Paul prayed, sense and wonders happened. But concerning adversity, he prayed to God the first time. And God said, Paul, be patient. Second time, Paul, be patient. Be patient. And third time, God said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. The grace to be here. Whatever you are going through, the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. How about Peter? Peter almost quit. Remember before Jesus led? Jesus told Peter that you are going to be in charge of the men at the court of prayer. While Peter was there, trying to warm up himself, as the trial was going on, but Jesus warned him, if only we can pay attention to the things of the Lord. And not, I think, we can do it by ourselves. For he said, without me, you can do nothing. Peter was warming himself, and the damsel, a lady came and said, you are one of them. He said, no, I don't know him. I don't know him. And then the third time, he denied the Lord. He denied the Lord. Peter then, hearing the cock crow, he got up from the place, the, from the environment of transgression, from the environment of sin, he cried. He wept bitterly. If you are going to come out of adversity, you have to learn to get up from where you are, to get out from that very place of in iniquity, that environment of transgression, and then you weep so, you cry to the Lord, and you call upon the God of heaven to have mercy upon me. Like David of old, he said, have mercy upon me, oh God, have mercy upon me, and God have mercy. God delivered David. Peter was delivered and because of genuine repentance, God had mercy on Peter. When Jesus rose up, he said, Peter, all hope is not lost. And I'm telling somebody here today, in the name of the Lord, no matter where you have been, your hope is not lost. I say your hope is not lost in the name of Jesus. Now, look at Esther. Esther became renowned. And we know Esther was a queen. But before that time, you know, the situation, they were in a string land. Esther was unqualified to become a queen. Whether foreigner or no foreigner, Esther mounted the throne. Somebody is on the way to the throne. In the year 2023, I said you're on your way to the throne. You are on your way to excellence in Jesus' name. Now come to think of Ruth. And these two ladies, Esther and Ruth, did some heroic things that made them to take weight in the Bible. And they became the only two women that had books in the Bible. And the Ruth came from a nation that was under cause by God. By virtue of where she was born, Moab. You say maybe in my background, my generation, my family line. This is what is going on with them. And the adversity is there. I have the good news for you. There is hope for you. In the name of Jesus, Ruth made up her mind. Yes, there may be a curse upon my lineage and generation and my nation, but I make myself an exception. I will not perish in this situation. 
oh, look at uh, uh, the, 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 the husband died, the father-in-law died, the brother-in-law died, and it was like everything was over. Bad thing after another bad thing. Bad thing another after bad thing. But Ruth did not give up on the God of Israel. You don't give up on God. I say you don't give up on God. That God will fight for you in Jesus' name. At the end of the day, at the end of the, you know the story? Ruth ended up going to Bethlehem, Judah. Ruth ended up getting married to Boaz. And uh, she became the great, 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 great maternal grandmother of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, by whom and through whom we have the salvation of the law or, or in the world today. The law is telling me to tell you that you should leave behind your past because your past is past. There is nothing you can do about it. Don't worry too much about your present because you're already in it. Think about the future. And begin to walk towards your future and begin to trust the Lord for a better future. No matter what the situation may have been, the shame, the gloom, the disappointment, the discouragement, the failure, everything you have been through, don't worry about that. Let me show you what the Bible says in the book of Job, chapter 14, verse 7. Job, chapter 14, verse 7. It says, for there is a hope. If, if, if a tree, there is a hope of a tree. There is a hope of a tree. If you be cut down, it shall sprout again. And that the tender uh, branch thereof will not cease. The Lord is saying, there is a tree that is standing. The tree is blossoming. The tree has leaves. The tree has fruit. And somebody went there and cut down the tree. And somebody did something to you thinking that your life is over. Hallelujah, somebody. I said hallelujah, somebody. Your life is just beginning. It's the same thing Joseph. As if it was all over. His life just began. There is hope of a tree. If it be cut down, it will sprout again. Your life will come back, will bounce back in a new and dramatic way in Jesus' name. Those that last at you today will celebrate you tomorrow. Can you imagine how Mrs. Potiphar began to feel after Joseph became the prime minister in the whole land of Egypt? When one, when one door closes, lift up your head onto the hills. You know, the Bible says, I will lift up my eyes onto the hill. From when cometh my head? My head from God, the maker of heaven and earth. If you look up unto God, looking up unto him, he will make ways for you in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. There the Bible says, remember you not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. This is not me talking. This is God talking to you. Put the name there. God is saying, I will do a new thing. This is what keeps me going. God is saying, I will do a new thing. Don't the vision tarry. It will not tarry. Wait for it. It will surely come to pass because God said, I will do a new thing. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Look at it. I will do a new thing. He said, now it shall spring forth. Amen. Amen. It will come to pass in your life. I get to the second point, decisive attitude towards adversity. Don't begin to cry because of what you are going through. Don't give up because of what you are going through. Don't lose hope because of what you are going through. Don't think your life is over because of what you are going through. No. The Bible tells Moses, told Moses, to tell the children of Israel, yes, Pharaoh and his army, they are behind you. With all their soldiers, with all their weapons, with all their horses, with all their ammunition, and then you look forward, and then it is resty. There is no way to go. There is hope for you. And the Lord is saying, with me, there is a way for you. 
I said there is a way for you. And so Moses, people cry. Moses cried to God. You know there are times we need to we need to get up from our knee of prayer and begin to act by result because faith will not work is there. If you really want to get see something happen, you need to apply work to your faith. And so they have been there. Moses has been praying and praying and just stationed in one place. And God said, Moses, why are you crying unto me? You have prayed and prayed. I am not dead. Tell your neighbor, God is not dead. Hey, tell your other neighbor, God is not dead. Say it one time and it is done. Amen. I said, say it one time and it is done in Jesus' name. But you know, many of us will say we are believers, but our prayers are like prayers of unbelievers. We pray as if God is dead. We pray as if God does not hear. And God had to tell Moses, to cry unto me. Do something. Or do something. Your neighbor, do something. There's like adversity, you will do something in Jesus' name. And God said, what is in your hand? And Moses said, it is a rod. And I'm asking, what is in your hand? You have the word of God. You have the power of God. You have the Holy Spirit of God. You have faith in God inside of you. What do you have? Put them to work and advance forward and make progress. And you will succeed in Jesus' name. And the Lord said unto Moses, why cast down unto me? Why criest thou unto me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. There is power of authority in your mouth, in your tongue. Use it. Tell somebody to use it. Tell somebody to use it. And so, before very soon we'll be praying into the new year, for us over here in the Philippines, we're already in the new year. Praise the Lord. Filipino, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. But hear me now. You are going to begin to speak light to yourself. You're going to begin to say, oh God, come here. These are the things I want done. And for those of you here before me, you said this year, 2023, these are the things I want done. And it will come to pass in Jesus' name. First Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 to 9. It was the case of David. David was in Siglag. And then David, the, the, the camp of David was burnt down. The enemy had attacked the camp while David was away. I don't know how the devil has attacked you, attacked your family, attacked your job, attacked your head, attacked your situation, attacked your career, attacked your education, whatever it is that the enemy has attacked to make you lose hope. Attention. People around David began to wag their tongues against David. They began to talk at David. They, began, they even wanted to stone David. Maybe because of what you are going through, people have been running their mouth against you. People have thought it is all over with you. They have been waiting to see your downfall, but unfortunately, they have been disappointed. I declare this year, 2023, coming. Your enemies will be disappointed. In the name of Jesus, and David, David, the Bible tells us in that passage of the scripture, David encouraged himself in the Lord. Look at the investors. He was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him because the souls of the people were grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughter. For David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David asked the Lord, you pray. David asked the Lord, and then he acted. Should I pursue? And God said, pursue. You are pursuing your career this year. You are pursuing your victory this year. You are pursuing your marriage this year. You are pursuing your degree this year. You are pursuing your prosperity this year in Jesus' name. Shall I pursue? And God said, pursue. And God is telling somebody here, pursue. 
And David went further to ask her, shall I overtake? And God said, you will surely overtake. Tell somebody next to you and say, I will overtake. Tell somebody, I will overtake. Amen. You know, before you are telling them about themselves, but now you are saying about yourself for the last time, tell somebody confidently and say, this year coming, 2023, I will overcome. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. David overcame, and uh, you will overcome. I said you will overcome. Amen. And if you are going to have this positive attitude again, remember all men go through adversity one way or the other. Refuse to be distracted. Refuse to be distracted. Refuse to be dejected. Reaffirm your faith in your future. Did you hear what I just said? Reaffirm your future. David was anointed king. So said he will not be dead. But every day they reminded him, say, I am the anointed king. I am the anointed king. Nobody will derail you in Jesus' name. Repass, uh, recall, rather, recall God's past faithfulness. Recall the faithfulness of God in the past. Israel was before the Philistines. Saul was timid and fearful. Nobody could confront Goliath and David showed all. Like you are going to like you are going to show up. And David showed up. Though a small child, it's not about your age, it's about your faith. Did you hear what I said? It's not about your age, it's about your faith. And David showed up. He said, I will take down this Goliath. I don't care the Goliath in your life. They are coming down the year 2023 in Jesus' name. And so said, How dare you? He said, King, listen to me. God has been faithful to me in the past. I killed a deer, a, a bear. I killed a lion. And this Goliath will be like one of them. So I said, is that right, boy? You killed a lion? Yes, king. You killed a bear? Yes, king. Go and kill Goliath. Goliaths of your life are coming down. Amen. So recall the past faithfulness of God. Rely not on your own understanding. Rely on the Lord. Retool yourself for several preparation you need to do. If you need to go back to school, if you need to seek some counseling, retool yourself for the challenges ahead of you. Refuse to throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't give up. Turn up. You know, when you're in the house, and you don't like a disturbing light. Don't sleep and the light will turn the switch on. There are people that are discouraging to you. Turn up from them. They are agents of darkness. They are enemies of progress. They are distractions to you. Turn up from hurting words. Tune up from negative attitudes of people. Tune up from false statements. Tune up from people that are not going to help you. They want to hurt you. They are the adversaries in your life. Turn away from them. Why you have one adversary, pay attention. There are 10 other people that are going to help you to accomplish your goal in life. Turn to that side. Amen? You know, there are some people I don't talk with because their words are not going to help me. So, I turn not from them. Praise the Lord. But people that are going to help me to accomplish my goal, I work with them. So, do the same thing. And then examine your life daily. Remember God is holy. Heaven is holy. And if you are going to walk with God, and if this holy God is going to help you out, you must be holy. So, examine yourself daily to be sure that you are still standing right in Christ Jesus. That sin had not secretly crept into your life. 
that fear has not taken the place of faith in your life, that you are still marching forward as a true soldier of Christ. Remember, first allegation against Joseph and the conspiracy against Daniel did not drown them. Nothing that is done against you will destroy you in Jesus' name. Remain focused on God. Remain focused on your goal. Remain focused on your plan, the plan for your life. And Jesus, in spite of the Pharisees, in spite of the Sadducees, always say, it is written concerning me. What is written concerning you? You are coming out in Jesus' name. Reconnect with men and women of faith. Reconnect with them. The faith builders, not the faith pillars. Look for faith builders. I get to the third point, desirable outcome after adversity. Desirable outcome. Now, I'm giving you this message not because there will be no challenges in the year 2023. No. That will be false impression. That will be lying to you. But I'm giving you this message to tell you that in spite of adversity, in spite of the problems, in spite of the challenges, that you will make it in Jesus' name. No, the scripture cannot be broken. The Bible says, when, pass, when thou passes through the fire, I will be with you. The fire will not consume you. When you pass through the water, the fire will not drown you. You will come out well in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. And God said unto Moses, Why criest thou unto me? Tell Israel, go forward. Tell Israel, go forward. And I'm telling you, 2023, you are going forward. In the name of Jesus. The book of Job, chapter 23, verse 10. Job, chapter 23, verse 10. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he had tried me, I shall come forth as gold. 2023 is your year of excellence in Jesus' name. It's a year of victory in Jesus' name. It's a year of promotion in the name of Jesus. You see, Job, despite the adversity, Job said to himself that I shall come out as gold. What is more than that? I've not known, read of, or seen anybody that went through just one percent of what Job went through. And if that one could say, I shall come out as gold. I can say to myself, I will come out as gold. How about you? We all will come out as gold in Jesus' name. Look at that passage again. Job chapter 14 verse 7. For there is hope of a tree. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again. And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. The Lord is saying, your seed will not perish. Your fruit will not perish. Your labor will not perish. You will succeed in life in Jesus' name. No matter what has been done to you, what was done to you, what is even being done to you right now, look beyond those people. Look up unto God, and your miracle is definite in Jesus' name. We read about David, the sailor, the burning down of the place, and then David say, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? Let us look at the outcome of that exploit. For Samuel, chapter 30, verses 18 and 19. And David recovered all that the Americans had carried away. And David recovered all that the Americans had carried away. And David recovered all. Somebody say all. all. Somebody say all. all. Your dignity. Your glory, your health, your strength, your family, your peace, your joy. And David recovered all. And I will recover all. I can hear somebody and I will recover all. David recovered all that the enemy had carried away. 
How about you? How about you? Mordecai came out triumphant. I told you about Peter. I told you about David. I told you about Daniel. I told you about the three, uh, the three Hebrews. How about Esther? How about the roots? Martin Luther, the great reformer, they all came out triumphant. Why? Because they were courageous. They were determined. They manifested faith. And they were focused on the plan and the purpose of God for their lives. As you walk into the new year and you walk through the new year, 2023, be sure your salvation is secure. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Ensure after salvation, you maintain a spotless life, life of purity and uprightness. Number three, be sure you are daily submissive to the will of God, the word of God. Don't run ahead, God. Submit unto God. Number four, serve the Lord. Somebody say, serve the Lord. Somebody say, serve the Lord. The plan of the enemy is to stop you from serving the Lord. But you make up your mind, I will serve the Lord. Amen. You serve the Lord with all your life. And then get involved with soul winning. Soul winning. As you are winning souls of people perishing, God is saving your own soul. Amen. So see it. So see it by faith. So into first life. Remember, uh, uh, um, David, he met that individual on the road. Part of the Amalekites that came to invade Siglai. David did not just walk away. David stopped by to invest into his life. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Praise the Lord. I need a better one. I said, I need a better one. Hallelujah. Amen. Separate from the world. You can't be in the world and be in the Lord. Not, not the world. Second, uh, uh, first uh, John chapter 2, verse 15. Not, not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Separate from the world. Separate from the world. Separate from the world. Be not unequally yoked together with unbeliever. And then get involved with scriptural prayer, not religious prayer, not denominational prayer, not congregational prayer, not traditional prayer, but prayers based on the Bible. Prayers of faith. And then stay focused on God. With that, by the grace of God and the power of God, you will advance despite adversity in Jesus' name. It is time for us to pray. Will you all rise upon your feet? Rise upon your feet. It is time to pray. Commit yourself to the hand of the Lord. No matter what you are going through, God is faithful. God is merciful. God is kind. God will help you. If there is any sin in your life, repent of it. That is the first step. Renounce your sin. Remain committed to the Lord. Call upon the God of heaven. To deliver you, to set you free, to liberate you, to wash you clean, to make you whole. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, you don't want to enter the new year with transgression, you don't want to continue the new year with iniquity. Touch me, O oh God. Keep on praying. 
and know my heart today. Try me, O Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. See there be some wicked way in me. Hands me from every sin and set me free. I praise the Lord for cleansing me from sin. Oh, fill the world and make me pure within. Fill me with power where once I bomb each year. Grant my desire to mark me from your name. Holy Ghost, revive the comes from thee, send a revival, start the walk in me, thy world declare the wish of life at me. Oh, Blessing now, O oh Lord, I humbly plead. All eyes closed, all eyes closed. You are one of those that is entering the new year with commitment and surrenderedness unto God. Absolute surrenderedness. If you raise up your hand now, I want to pray for you. You're one of those you knew the Lord before, but you know you are backsliding. You know that you are, your life is not what it ought to be in the Lord. And you are saying, Lord, have mercy upon me. If you raise up your hand, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Raise up your hand. You are, this is your first time in church. And you have heard the word of God. And you want to move forward spiritually, physically, materially, psychologically, and in every area of your life. You want to succeed. And you're saying, oh, Lord, here am I. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. But it's me, oh, Lord, standing in the inner prayer. I want to pray for you. Close your eyes. All eyes closed. Father, I come before you right now. On behalf of the people whose hands are up. Reconnecting with you. Asking for the restoration of their life, the removal of their sin, and complete life in Christ. Look down from heaven, O Lord. Have mercy upon them. Forgive their transition. Make them whole. Begin a new thing in their life. Make this year, 2023, a year with a difference, a year of victory. A year of success, a year of excellence, a year of power and of mind. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father, I pray. Every problem represented in every life, I come against them now. I cancel them completely in Jesus' name. Every discouraging situation, devastating situation, Lord God, take away from the lives of your people in Jesus' name. I come against affliction. I come against oppression. I come against infirmity. I come against limitation. I come against failure. I come against cancer. I come against tumor. Father, 
destroy them all in Jesus' name. Every spirit of stagnation and poverty, I banish you from the lives of the people in the name of Jesus. Have your way. In every area that your people need your visitation, visit them and bless them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. God bless you all. Uh, I'm glad to see your faces over there in Washington. Amen. Let me see different angle of the different people. And uh, I wish you all Happy New Year. The Lord bless you. You took their picture away, media department. I need to see my people. Amen. God bless you. Yes, yes, I can see you waving your hand also. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then 2023, I'll meet you on top. I said, I'll, I'll meet you on top. I will be there. You'll be there. All of us will be there together in Jesus' name. And those of you here in the, uh, in the Philippines, we are all going together to the top in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Thank you so much. You all have a wonderful rest of the night over there and the day over here. Bye-bye. was a prophetic situation. And Elisha was sick, which was going to lead to his death. 
And then came an opportunity for somebody who was supposed to continue in life. Make sure you're with me. Second Corinthians, or Second Kings, I mean to say. And you can display it for the people, please. Second Kings chapter 13, verse 14. Now Elisha was falling sick of his sickness whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. Verse 16, he said to the king of Israel, Put thy hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elijah put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, Open the window eastward. The window of 2023 has been opened to you. I declare that the window 2023 has been opened to somebody here. It is the window of life, it's the window of breakthrough, it is the window of great things mighty things. He said, open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. This year, 2023, is a year of deliverance. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance from Syria. Our pastor just ministered to us advancing through adversity. He said, if I didn't tell you the way, it's supposed, the way it is, if I don't tell you there will be adversity, then I will be telling you lies. He said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Afek till thou have consumed them. Verse 18, everybody read with me. And he said, take thy arrows. And he took them. He said unto the king of Israel, smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed. Today, you're not going to do it one time. You're not going to do it twice. You're not going to do it thrice. I will let you do it as much as you want to. Don't just do it because I said you should do it. You're going to do it with the eyes of faith. This year, 2023, God is going to give somebody a vision, a projection through that vision. And that vision will define your progress. Amen. In that vision, you will see your breakthrough. Amen. You know, many times we're talking about strategies. In that vision, there will be a strategy. A month-by-month -month strategy. A step-by-step -step guidance. A step-by-step -step breakthrough into your future. Let me say this to you. 2023 is come unto you. The window is open. The door is open.